So this is a introduction to using MuseScore. MuseScore is a free bit of software that allows you to write out chord charts. And this video, we're just gonna learn how to open it and create a simple chord chart. Writing your own chord charts is a really excellent way of developing your understanding of how music works and how to play a particular song. Um, the process of working out which chords there are, how long they last for, writing the structure out, um, will really mean you know the song really well and you're, you're gonna be able to play it very capably. Um, and your understanding just of how song structure in general works is massively accelerated by creating your own transcriptions. So Musical is free, you, you can download it from the internet for whatever kind of computer you have, and it's just quite safe, it doesn't take up too much space. When you open it, um, you'll probably get a couple of, like an introductory page, and then you're basically gonna get this screen here. So to create a new, um, a new chord chart, or you're gonna go, I'm gonna press this one, or you can go file, new and um let's say we wanted to create a chord chart for let it be we would just write that in the title box and then you just go to next and here you can choose various different things let's, let's choose a treble clef one just now well we won't bother with any key signatures so we'll just leave that one blank i'm going to go next i'm going to choose four four because this song is in four four and then Underneath that, you can set the number of bars. We'll just leave it like that for now, but you could make it be fewer or more. You can also add and remove bars later on, so it's you don't have to know in advance how many bars you need. And you're just gonna click Finish, and you get something that looks like this. Now, obviously, this would not be a great layout for a piece of music. So there's lots of controls that MuseScore has that makes it easier to see. So typically, um, let's say a song is, I think eight bars or four bars per line is good. So for, for a lot of pop songs, I really like the layout where you've got four bars per line, makes it easy to read. If you try to kind of keep track of where you were with loads and loads of bars, it's, it gets harder to read it. Um, you can see here that there are rests inside the bars. Typically, I think it's useful to be able to create very clean looking chord charts so I personally like um, having all the rests invisible when I print it so to do that I just gonna select all the bars that are visible you do that by clicking on the first thing that you want to select then you hold down shift and then you click on the second thing you want to select and then you're going to press v and it makes everything that you've selected invisible so you can still see them a little bit on the screen, but when you print them out, you won't be able to see them. So then you can click anywhere outside to deselect. And now um, let's say that we want to start putting some chords in above the bars. So then we're gonna click on the first bar and we're gonna find control or command. I'm gonna do control K. And then that opens a little cursor right above the bar and you can just you just type in the letter that you want for the chord. So with let it be in the original key, it's going to start on C. So you're going to put a C in. If you wanted to put one chord per bar in, which is pretty common, you can press tab and that is going to move the cursor along to the next bar. Um, in this instance, the chords actually last for two beats rather than four beats. So instead, we're going to press the space bar Every time you press the space bar, it takes you forward by one beat. So we're going to press the space bar twice, and then we're going to put the next chord in, which is G. And then we're going to press the space bar two more times, and we're going to be at the beginning of the next bar, and we're going to put in an A minor. And then we are going to press the space bar two more times, and I'm going to put the next chord in, which is F. So um, you can see it's kind of pretty cramped here. Um, to make it a bit easier to read and to to space the bars how you want them to be spaced, you need to put the break the breaks between lines in manually. So on the left hand side, you'll see these little drop down menus. Under breaks and spaces, there's something that looks like kind of right angle with an arrow. If you click that one and drag it across, 
and you drag it on the fourth bar, you're going to see that that makes you, that, that kind of breaks the line after four bars. And now we can see our chords are much better spaced out. So we can do that as much as we want. So now um, let's say that I had quite, you know, the song I was writing down had a few different sections and I wanted them all to fit on one page. You can see right now there's a lot of space in between those lines. If you look at the top and you go to style, um, should allow you, oh, we need to click, I think it's, we need to click out of that cursor. So, yeah. So go back to style and it says general. And if you go to page, so it's the second one down. And then if you go to max system distance, and if you just take that down to, let's say, uh, 12. And you press apply at the bottom. And then you press OK. Now you can see that those um, lines are closer together. If you want the page to be bigger or smaller, um, I think control, control minus or control plus will make it bigger and smaller. Probably also views got a zoom. So then you're, we're back to our, our chord chart. So let's say that we want to um, write down how to strum it. And in this instance, we're just going to do just downstrokes. Um, so we go back to the first bar and we click on the first bar. And this time, so I'm going to show you how to create the rhythm notation that you're used to using. Um, we need to enter the notes in first and then change them into rhythm notation. So to do that, you're going to press N on the keyboard, or you can also select the little N shape in the top left hand of the um, controls. And then you see that it's sort of highlighted the part of the bar right under the C chord. Um, where the mouse is now, you can see notes of different durations. If we wanted a shorter note or a longer note than a quarter note, we would click on the one on any of the other note durations. It's already default selected a quarter note, so we'll leave that as it is. To change the note duration, you can either change the, the selected key up there, or there are some numbers that correspond to the different note durations that come up when you hover. So um, to enter the note into the, the music, into the staff, you're just going to go down underneath the C, and you'll see that it's got a little note head that's moving around. So you don't need to know how to read music to do this because we're going to be changing these into rhythm slashes anyway. But um, um, that particular note is G, so we'll just put that in by clicking and we can hear that a note is being played. And I'm going to do that again because we, we want four in the bar. Um, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. Um, I think you can also press R to get it to repeat something. So now, um, to get out of note entry, we press ESC. And to select that whole bar, to turn all those notes, and we just click on it, and it should select the whole bar. And then you're going to go up to Edit, and down to Tools, and then Toggle Rhythmic Slash Notation, and that's going to turn it into Rhythm Slashes. So personally, I quite like it when the stems are up instead of down. And to do that, you can press X and that will flick the direction of the stems. And then if you click out of that bar, you're done. So you could, of course, fill the whole, um, if you wanted this strumming the whole way through, you could fill the whole thing with, with slashes or you could um, copy and paste or you could empty them all in. Personally, I think once you've reminded yourself what, what the strumming is, it's a little bit easier to read and a little bit cleaner without writing things in every single bar. So I would typically leave the rest without any strumming, unless there was a special rhythm at some point in the song that I wanted to remember. So let's carry on writing our chord chart. We'll, we'll click into the third bar. I'm going to do control K again. And that's going to have our, our cursor coming up. And now we're going to enter the next chords, which is going to be C. And then we're going to do press the space bar twice, and we're going to put G. And then we're going to press the space bar twice, and then we're going to do F. 
And I'm going to press the space bar twice. And we add C. And that's the first part of the song. So um, in Let It Be, as in many songs, um, the, there's a, there are repeating sections. So that particular chord progression repeats a further two times for the verse. So rather than typing everything in again, I'm just going to copy and paste it. Um, so I'm going to click into the first bar, so that the whole bar is highlighted. So you need to make, um, and you need to make sure you click on the bar rather than on the note. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm, now I've got the whole line selected, and I'm going to do Control C, and then I'm going to click into the next line. I'm going to do Control V, and that's going to copy it. So at this point, if I wanted to take out the strumming in the first bar, I could do that by just clicking each note individual, individually and deleting it. Those little rests won't show up when you print it because they grayed out. So um, now, because the verse goes around twice, I could either copy and paste it again, but that's taking up quite a lot of unnecessary space. It might be better for me to put in some repeats. So to do that, um, I go over to the left hand side where it says of the of Muse score where it says palettes and under bar lines, you can see there's a little drop down menu and I'm just going to pick up um, an open repeat sign and drag it across to where I want the repeat repeated section to start and drop it in. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to click and drag the close repeat sign. And I'm going to drop it in at the end of the line. And so now I've got my, my repeated verse. If I wanted to write any text, I'm going to go on the left hand side down to where it says text. And I'm going to do the drop down and where it says either stave text or system text, I can click and drag that across and drop it over the bar where I want to add the text. Um, oops. And then I can move it up or down and I can write verse one. And I just click return and then that will that'll show up. So you can also alter the fonts as you want any any particular font that you you put in if you click on it, um, another font window will come up at the bottom of the page. And you can alter the font and you can alter the size. Um, I quite like having chord symbols nice and big. So another thing you can do is go to style, text, scroll down to chords and make the size bigger. And now our chord symbols are bigger. Um, so that is how you m create a basic chord chart. If I wanted to um, add extra bars, let's say I forgot to add a chord in somewhere, and I wanted to insert a bar, you can do all of that by highlighting a bar, going to edit, down to bar, then I could delete it, or I can add bars, I can insert one, or I can insert many, I can add one on the end, or I can add many on the end. And you've also got some opportunities to add text and things here. So there's a lot more things you can do. Um, you can also write in the melodies. You can also create guitar tabs with tab. Um, you can write in slightly more complex song structures that have jumps in them. For example, da capo al fine or dal senio al fine. We're not going to worry about that in this video. We're just focused on how you set up your first Muse score sheet and enter some chords into it. Um, so it, it is really satisfying when you start making your own chord charts and it is really, really good for your overall musical development and it's pretty fun.